Bulletins are immediately issued to all airline carriers about pitot-static problems. But Aero Peru had not yet implemented the changes. The bulletins and the, let's call it the fruits of the Dominican Republic investigation of Bergen Air had not yet reached Aero Peru at the time this accident occurred. The Peruvian government very correctly made a point of that in their report on the accident, saying that they should have given more impetus to those recommendations to get them out to the industry quicker. 9700, but it is indicating too low terrain. Even if Schreiber and Fernandez had known about Bergen Air, it may not have helped them survive given the high pressure of their situation. What? We lower gear. It's easy to sit here in the 757 cockpit and play the Monday morning quarterback, uh, having heard the bells and the overspeed warnings, the ground proximity warning, the stall warning. Um, it's very easy to do that and sit here and, and say what I would have done being an experienced pilot. But to put yourself into the position of those two pilots that night, they were in an extremely difficult situation to fly that airplane and, and recover from that, uh, that experience. Two weeks after the crash, Monus Albert joins dozens of grieving families seeking the remains of his brother-in-law and his friend. He finally identifies them in a Lima morgue. I wanted to find them. I really wanted to find them. And, and one part of me didn't want to find them because the, there was this fantasy that if I don't find them, maybe they're in an island with a, with a, with a drink and looking at some girls dancing. I can close the chapter. I can, I can go and take him and have him buried, and, and there'll be a place for the family to go and, and put some flowers once in a while and, and say, OK, my, my brother-in-law's here, or my dad is here, or my husband is here. Now that the investigators have their answer to the mysterious loss of Aero Peru 603, the lawsuits begin. In November 1996, a Miami lawyer takes the case on behalf of 41 passengers and crew, arguing that Boeing is liable for the accident. Boeing has to foresee the misuse of their product. In other words, a manufacturer of a product is legally liable for the foreseeable misuse of their product, if it can be corrected. In other words, Boeing builds the airplane with a with potential hazard in it. That hazard is that in order to clean the airplane, you have to cover the static port. And if you don't take it off, the airplane can crash. I wanted them back. And since I couldn't get them back, at least I wanted the wives of the victims to get compensated. How much is that worth? I don't know, I didn't know. Abraham had three daughters, and now they don't have a father. So what is the compensation? The best compensation, if, if can be done, is get them back, give them life back again. But because that is not possible, then the other possibility is to get a monetary compensation. And then you fight for the best compensation you can get. Boeing argues that Aero Peru is at fault, not at 757. An Aero Peru worker forgot to remove tape from over the static port, which is marked with clear warnings. Boeing also blames Captain Eric Schreiber. It was his job to visually inspect the aircraft before taking off. But investigator Richard Rodriguez can understand how Schreiber overlooked the tape on the static port. One of the reasons is it's very high. It's about maybe 15, 17 feet up in the air. And at night with a flashlight, and this happened to be duct tape, which you're not supposed to use. They're, they specify the tape, and it was duct tape, which is silver. So it would not distinguish itself against the background of the fuselage of the aircraft. So basically, three or four people failed to detect the tape on the aircraft prior to departure. 
As the search for blame continues, the worker who taped the ports is jailed for negligent homicide. Uh, lawyers, they, lawyers, uh, you know, sometimes they confuse the uh, matters and uh, they send the guy and uh, ask people questions and ask quick questions and the one that stuck the tape was the painter, was the, the, the lowest cultured and the, the one that knew less about what could happen. And the judge uh, resolved that uh, he was the, the one uh, responsible and he was in jail. Schreiber and Fernandez are also scrutinized. Veteran pilot Alan McLeod believes that in their situation, he would not have attempted to land. He would have continued to fly for as long as he could with the plane angled upward slightly and the speed set just above cruise. Experience has shown that if, if you don't fly the airplane when you're experiencing an abnormal situation, and they certainly were, uh, you must fly the airplane. Just concentrate on flying the airplane and get the airplane under control, first and foremost. Are we going down now? We have 370 knots. If you don't do that, the airplane's going to bite you, and you're going to end up uh, in more serious situations. So I would fly the airplane, make sure I was able to fly it safely, if only by using the attitude direction indicator and normal power settings that I was familiar with, and then eventually work my way back and get it on the ground. In 1999, Boeing and Aero Peru decide to settle the lawsuits out of court. Families and loved ones receive an exceptional settlement, averaging a million dollars US per victim. The damages are high because of the terrible way the victims of Aero Peru died. We were able to show that a lot of the people were alive. In a crash like this, a lot of the people would survive the crash and then died of drowning. There was no question in our minds that the people suffered terrible, terrible terror and pain when this happened to them. They were horrified. They were awake. They knew what happened. The disaster helped sink Aero Peru. Combined with increased competition and rising debt, the national airline goes bankrupt in 1999. Boeing increases training on pitot-static problems and issues new regulations and approved static port covers. Since 1996, there has not been another pitot-static failure like the one on Aero Peru 603. The designers of these products, the manufacturers of the products, I know that they have to take safety into account. They have to, of course, they do that because they know it's the right thing to do. But they also know that if they don't do it, there's going to be somebody watching them that's going to investigate it, that's going to find out why it happened, and that they're going to be accountable for what they do wrong. And that if they don't take into consideration safety, they're going to have to pay for it. The case is settled, and the airline industry moves on. Such is the world of commercial aviation. But it is little consolation for those whose lives were scarred forever by an insignificant piece of tape. It suddenly, you say that guy doesn't exist anymore. It's very hard to swallow that. It's very hard to, to understand. And it took me uh, a long time to accept. So the memory is still there, and it will be there for a long time. I'm not gonna let go. I don't wanna let go. <laughs>